What do you do when everything's going wrong? <laughs> you revise. <laughs> Is revision the most fun thing you'll ever do? Uh, I don't know. I kind of enjoy it. I enjoy it a lot more than the drafting process, which is basically me hitting my head against this keyboard here. But it's the most important part. Good writing is not done in a good first draft. Good writing is done fixing things, making sure everything works. Here's how you do it. One of the biggest mistakes that young writers tend to make is they try to do too much at once. Writing really is a process, and the more you break it down, the better you're going to be. And this applies to everything, but in our case, we're going to talk about how it applies to fixing your papers. Mainly, there's a real difference between revision, editing, and proofreading, and you have to approach them as completely separate enterprises if you want to be able to do any of them well. We're going to talk about revision here. It's big picture work. It's does the text do what it's supposed to do? Is it properly articulated? Does it spell out your vision? Does it fulfill its purpose? These are the big picture items, the higher level things that show up. Basically, is it an effective document in terms of content? Editing is checking the source against target for mistranslations, looking for inconsistencies, looking for major style and clarity issues, making sure your language is as powerful as possible, checking your wording, all that kind of fun stuff. It's getting the language right. Proofreading is the final check for all the nitpicky things like spelling, grammar, syntax, punctuation, blah, blah, blah. In this video, we're going to talk mostly about revision. This is going to be a little bit less prescriptive than you might think, because revision is basically about getting the paper to do what it's supposed to do. And obviously, you can't give a one-size-fits-all plan for that. It depends on what the purpose of the assignment is. So the best we can do is break it down into large-scale work and small-scale work. In terms of the large-scale work, this means looking at the big picture. Does it work as a cohesive document? This is the time you're going to want to definitely read the whole thing through to make sure that everything is doing what it's supposed to. I'd recommend a read through just at normal speed without marking anything and then trying to figure out how well your document worked. Check the focus. You would be surprised how many papers I get in any class where they're doing something that's not really on the assignment sheet. The assignment sheet is a very important thing in a college class, definitely, because it spells out what we're looking for. And I don't care how good you are, if you don't give us what we're looking for, it's going to affect our evaluation of your work. Even taken outside the confines of the university, making sure you're doing the work you're supposed to do is going to determine whether people want to read your stuff or not, whether someone wants to pay you to keep doing your stuff. So making sure that you're fulfilling the actual obligations of your assignment as opposed to just doing what you think is right. The assignment sheet is where I spell out what I want. And if I don't get that, that's going to be a prime determining factor. It's easy to get lost in the weeds. It's easy to think that something else is more important and go off wandering in search of it. But you really need to keep the focus that whoever's asking you to write the paper requires. Spend some specific time working on the introductions and the conclusions. The introduction is the part of any document which establishes how a reader will interpret everything that goes on. If you're going to set up your stuff properly, it needs to be in the introduction. If you're going to walk me through your argument, that needs to happen in the introduction. Many professional writers will write an entire document and then go back and do the introduction last or make it the first thing you go back and check. If the introduction is solid, I'm going to be in a good state of mind for the rest of the paper. If the introduction shows issues, I'm going to assume those issues are going to recur over and over in the paper and I'm going to look for them. Conclusion is the thing that wraps up everything for the reader. 
you state your conclusions and that gives me an idea of what I should have been thinking and lets me in on the significance of your document and it lets me in on where we go next. Basically by focusing on the introductions and conclusions, I'm not saying everything else isn't important, but introductions and conclusions are particularly important because it gets me in the mood to follow your work and then it makes me think about your work after we're done. Going into the structure, making sure the document has whatever sections might be required of it. If there aren't required sections, make sure what you have is flowing in a way that makes some kind of sense. Do you hit point two before you hit point three? Would this paragraph be better over here? That kind of stuff. Does it work as a cohesive whole because are all the parts where they need to be. Look at document design. And sometimes the writing, this is going to be more important than others. In tech writing and business writing, lots of documents that go out to the general public are very important how well they look. People don't like to read ugly documents. When you're talking standard academic writing, it's a little bit more cut and dry because there are specific requirements for how we want stuff to look. Don't try to, for instance, two and a half space something with inch and a half margins or something like that. If there are rules, follow the rules. If there are ways to make it more visually attractive and that's appropriate for your type of document, make it more visually attractive. Once you do the big picture and you look at it and you're looking for the key things that are going wrong, the areas where something isn't working. Then you go from large scale into small scale and you look for the specific problem areas and you fix them however you need to fix them. Again, there's not one size fits all advice to be given here. It just simply depends on what this particular portion is supposed to do. But then once you fix the small scale area, the problem area, you have to go back and look at your document from a large scale perspective again. It's very important because you change a part. You can potentially change the whole point of the exercise. And you want to make sure that changing this doesn't completely alter everything that comes before it. Sometimes it does, and you realize that's a bad thing and you have to change it again. Sometimes it alters everything and gives you better insights and makes you want to fix everything else to reach the same level as that area you just fixed. Revision also means making sure your base of knowledge is correct, which means research. You should be researching at multiple stages in the writing process. You should be looking for stuff when you're thinking of ideas. You should be looking for stuff as you're going through your drafting process. And you should be looking to see if you need different information or more specific information when you go to revise. What makes a decent source? We're at the stage now where anyone can put anything online, but there are definite places online that are better than others. If you can probably get a good sense of it by the general reputation of the website. Although it's tricky because Buzzfeed nowadays has a really good news program, but then they also have pick these five types of soups and we'll tell you which Game of Thrones character you are. So you have to be able to judge each source on its merit. Make sure it's credible. Make sure it's from a good place. Make sure it demonstrates care and research and good work. If there's a layer of control, that's going to be really good. It's one of the reasons why a lot of teachers will tell you they only want peer-reviewed stuff. If it's in an academic journal, academics have made sure that it's academic enough to be published there. If it's on my personal web page, I'm the only one who cares about that. You have to make sure that your document is current, too, because ideas change. Have you ever heard of phrenology? This is an interesting one, because back at the end of the 19th, beginning of the 20th century, could be a little off on those dates, but there was a theory going around that you could tell something about the type of person by the shape of their head. Yeah, it sounds wacky nowadays, 
but at the time it was an accepted scientific theory. And you see from the image in front of you, the general shape of your head had something to do with where your brain was in your head, and that determined how you think about things, according to this theory. They also could go more specific and get specific personality characteristics by looking at the bumps on your head and such. Well, there's a big problem with phrenology. Not only is it not accurate, it's the way it ended up getting used. Because around the same time, there was a big trend in science to try to justify social trends. What I mean by that is there was a lot of science done by people who held relatively racist views, which ended up supporting those racist views. Phrenology was one of them. Phrenology was used quite often to say people from this background have better thinking than people from this background. And when something is driven more by what I think about people than the evidence, it gets to be bad. Now, if you were writing a paper back in this time, phrenology would be perfectly fine. If you're writing a paper now and referencing phrenology, uh, you're going to be running into some problems. Because the state of the art has long since moved on from that. Some fields, the state of the art moves faster than others. In computers, the state of the art is moving really quick. And things are changing at such a rapid pace because the technology hasn't settled yet. We don't know, for instance, what the internet is. Yeah, we can give you a basic description, but there was a time where we thought that the internet was going to be largely about blogs, and for a while it was largely about blogs. Anybody can publish anything they want. It's the great democratization of knowledge. Then for a while, everything was supposed to be about push technology. Companies would be able to deliver custom content to your screen. What you ordered, they would send it to you. You could get, say, the Warner Brothers channel or the Disney channel. Basically, they were trying to adopt the television model. There was a point in time where social media was the be-all, end-all, and everything was going to be social media. Blogs were dying. Everyone went to social media. Facebook, the heyday of Facebook and Twitter and so on and so forth. Nowadays, we're kind of moving out of that. What are we moving into? Well, it's going to be changing quite frequently. So if I'm doing something on the Internet, sources from seven years ago aren't going to be all that valuable to me. So one of the jobs of Eurovision is making sure your sources are not only quality publications, but making sure that they're current enough. It's important when you're doing revision that you give yourself enough time to really fix it. That means you can't really procrastinate on the drafting process. Even if you end up with something that's kind of, no one's going to know because you're going to fix it. Give yourself enough time to make sure everything's right. See you in the next video.